Hi, eighth grade, this is Mrs. Kim, and I'm really excited to share this first project with you. We're gonna be creating covers for our sketchbooks that are unique, and also um, it's a process that when you're through, you'll kind of have a surprise result. You'll, you'll start out with one thing and end up revealing a surprise at the end. So I'm gonna walk you through the first steps of the process. It's like a three-part project, and um, as we go, I can pause the video and you can feel free to ask me any questions or if you're learning from home, you can type questions into Google Classroom. So let's get started. This is a piece of paper that I um, have given you or have sent home with you. I've coated it with an acrylic paint already that makes the paper waterproof and that's gonna be important later on in this lesson. So you'd open it up just like a normal sketchbook cover. Um, so you'll be working on the front um, and I folded it in half. You can also see so it opens like a book. We're gonna start out by creating a backdrop for the cover and for this you get to use your creativity and you also get to show me what some of your favorite colors are. So this is our old friend the color wheel. I'm sure you guys recognize this. Um, it's a really simple color wheel that we're gonna be working with just the six primary and secondary colors for this first project. So you'll notice that the colors run together in a way that makes sense in the color wheel. For example, if you mix red and blue, you'll get purple. If you mix blue and yellow, you'll get green. And these colors that are side by side on the color wheel have a name. And that name is analogous. And the way I remember it is because it has the words Al and Gus in it. And I like to think of them as two guys that are friends and they always like to be side by side. And so that's what helps me remember that Al and Gus are side by side and analogous colors are side by side on the color wheel. So you're gonna choose your favorite three analogous colors. So I chose red, orange, and yellow for this demonstration but you're welcome to choose any three you like. Any three that touch each other will work perfectly. And so that's your opportunity to show your creativity and what you enjoy about the colors on the color wheel. You should have gotten three small cups. And so you'll see that I've got my red paint, orange paint, and yellow paint in my cups. And we're gonna be applying these colors to the cover of your sketchbook and blending them together in a pattern that you find interesting. So for example, if you wanna make a strip of red at the top that melts into a strip of orange that flows into a strip of yellow, you can do that. You might wanna blend the colors diagonally in stripes. Maybe you wanna make a circular design with red on the outside, orange in the middle, or I'm sorry, orange next to it, and then yellow in the middle. You can really put them on your paper in any way, shape, or form that you find interesting, okay? So I decided I was gonna do mine in kind of a diagonal. So I'll probably put red up here, orange in the center, and then yellow at the bottom, okay? You should also have a cup of water at your table and a paper towel, and we'll try our best not to get too messy, okay? So I'm gonna grab my brush. This is my friend Bob, he's gonna watch you guys too. And I'm gonna start with some red paint and just apply it in a diagonal pattern. I've got a piece of scratch paper underneath here, so if I go over the edges, it's totally fine. I don't have to worry about it. You guys should have um, newspaper on your table to keep things from getting too messy. And I'm gonna put a pretty decent coat of paint on here. I don't want too much of the white of the sketchbook showing through. I'll probably stop there with my red and go over the top of it. And then I'm gonna wash my brush out. Acrylic paint is great because when it dries, it puts a kind of a plastic coating on your surface. And so that coating is waterproof also, and it will give us the ability later on to do some washing on our cover. And I'll tell you what we're washing in just a second. So I'm gonna put my orange next. To blend colors together, I don't necessarily wanna take this big old blob of orange and put it right into my red. It helps to start in the middle and start filling that space in. 
And then as I go, I'm gonna work my way up to the red just so I don't get too much of the red into the orange paint um, towards the bottom where I wanna keep it more of a pure orange color. So I'm gonna grab a little more from my cup and then work my way up and acrylic paints, they stay wet for a little bit. They don't dry immediately like some other kinds of paints do. So you have the opportunity as you're working, you have to use a little bit of speed, but you can actually blend them together so you get a smooth transition between the two colors. So I'm gonna work that red and those oranges together and I'll hold this up so you can see how it's looking so far. And they're starting to blend together. And the back of my sketchbook's getting a little bit messy and that is totally fine because it's art and we get to make a little bit of a mess. All right, I've got my orange and then I'm gonna put a lot of yellow on the bottom. It's such a nice bright color and I really want that to be a big section of my cover. So last thing I'll do is grab a lot of yellow and use that same technique where I start by filling in the white paper first and then I'll work my way up where the yellow and the orange meet. Yellow is one of those colors that tends to soak up whatever color you're blending into it really easily. It's a lighter color and it um, has the potential to get kind of messed up by any colors around it real quickly. So that's why I'm gonna work this area where I'm blending them last because that orange will just take the yellow right over. Okay, I've got those blended. I'm liking how that's looking. And so this will be one day of work for us in class because we're gonna need to let these dry really well overnight. So your sketchbook cover will probably look really different than mine and that's amazing. I want yours all to look unique, but this is what my sample looks like for right now. And when it's dry, I'll show you the next step. All right, bye.